Welcome everyone, this is Wendy from Poppy Hill Designs. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design and laser cut these beautiful wood earrings. I'll be using the M1 10 watt laser diode from Xtool, and I'll be utilizing the Creative Space software that comes with that machine. They recently added a bunch of vectorized clip art, and that will be the base for the earring. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to get perfect alignment in the laser for a pair of earrings, so don't miss that. And just because you create one design doesn't mean you're left with one option. Here's a sneak peek at something else that I did with that same design. So I'm going to begin with the software tutorial, and then I'll, we can get into to looking at some of the different options that I created with this particular design. So with that being said, let's jump right into it and get started. Hi everyone! In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful pair of earrings using the Xtool Creative Space and their new vectorized clip art. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to begin by clicking on the shapes icon, then I'll go down to plant, click on the arrow to expand the menu, and then I'm going to choose this flower right here. Now I know this flower could represent many types of flowers, but I'm going to refer to this as the hibiscus earring. So let's have a closer look at this. I'm going to highlight all the pieces, bring it down to about the center of the canvas, hold down the control key on my keyboard, and use the scroll on my mouse to make this larger. Now you can also do this by clicking on the plus or minus sign from this menu. So let me bring this over here. Now if we look at this, we can see that all the pieces are individual. Even though they're assigned the same color, I'm still going to group everything together. So highlight, right click, and select group. Next we need to decide on a size. Now I'm working in inches today, and I want the finished size to be 1.5 inches in width. Now with the lock on, the software will automatically update the height for me, so I don't have to worry about that and it will maintain the aspect ratio of the design. But I want to decrease this size to 1.4 before we start adding some effects to this. The next step will be to click on the blue layer, go up to outline, and the outline is often referred to offset, and the default is 0.079. I'm going to change this to 0.7 actually 0.09. Okay, so you can see that's added a nice offset for me. Click OK. Then while that is selected, I'm going to right click and assign the color red for that one. Now we have two items in the layers panel. I'm going to click on the blue layer again, go to outline. This time I want a negative, so I want, instead of an offset, I would like an inset. So what I have to do here is, for some reason, it will not let me go in front of the zero, so I have to go right before it, hit the arrow to go back, click on the minus, and I'll leave that at minus 0 0.07, and click OK. While that is highlighted, right click and assign that a new color. So now if I look at my layers palette, I have three layers, each with their own unique color, of course. Now you do not have to change the name in the layers palette, but you may find it helpful. So I'm going to double click on the purple one, call this one Engrave. The red one I'll call Cut. And the blue one I'll call Score. So if I click on Engrave and then go over to the Processing type, choose Engrave, you can see that fills it in. This gives me a nice visual of how things may look once I send it off to the laser. So at this point your design is complete, so we need to finalize the size. So I'm going to select all the elements, go up to width, and you can see now it's 1.58. I wanted my finish size to be 1.5. So I'm going to decrease that size, the height will automatically update, and now I know that I'm good to go for this. The next step is to add either a hole 
or some kind of a hoop on there so that you can attach the jump ring. Now if you're going to just do the small hole, what I would have done on the offset would have been increase that size so that I give myself a little bit of room to place a hole here. But I wanted to show you how I create like a double circle hoop so that, that I can put the jump ring in. So I'll go back up to insert, select circle, hold down my shift key and draw my first circle. Then I'll go up to size and I'm going to change that to 0 0.25 and that's inches. Click copy paste and change the inner circle to 0 0.1. Then I'm going to select both those circles, go to align, horizontal, and vertical alignment. Now we have two pieces that we want to make one piece. So if I go to combine, subtract and overlap, now this has become one piece. Right click, assign red, because this will be part of the cut selection. Put that at the top of the earring, select all of the elements, go to align, horizontal align. Now I'm going to go in closer so you can see how I overlap these before I join them together. Select the circles and then with the arrows on my keyboard, I'm going to place it so it's about the inner circle and outer circle are about in the center of this part of the earring. So this cut line here. Go to your layers panel, click on the red layers, go up to combine, say unite, and now you've got a perfect attachment here to put your jump ring. At this point the design is complete. Isn't that cute? So what I'm going to do next is duplicate this design because it's earrings and I want two of them. So copy paste, move it over to the side, go up to reflect, reflect horizontally. And the reason that I've done this will be obvious when we go to the laser, which is the next step. Actually, the next step is save your file before I get ahead of myself. So go up to file and do save, give your file a name and a location on your computer. And the next step will be off to the laser. So I'll see you there. So I've got my laptop connected to my M1. I have the 10 watt uh, laser diode. And the next thing we need to do is bring in the file that I just designed. So go up to File, Open Project, double click on the file, and it brings it onto the canvas. Next, I'm going to select the material. I'll be using the three millimeter basswood for this project. And then I'm going to hit the Auto Measure. Now this just takes a couple of seconds. And that looks like that was successful, so that's great. And notice now we have a screenshot of what's on the bed of the laser. It's very important that you have your material securely attached to the honeycomb. And I'm using the magnets that came with that whole setup and it works really great. And now I'm going to take those two earrings and I'm going to just move them up to the top corner of my material. Obviously I don't want to cut a pair of earrings in the, the center of the wood. And let's get a closer look here. And then what we're going to do is assign the parameters to each of those layers. So we will begin with the engrave layer. So on the defaults, it's currently a power of 70, a speed of 175, and one pass. So I am going to change the speed from 175 to 150 and let everything else remain the same. And then the next one that we'll choose is cut. And I'm going to leave that at the default. That seems to work really well for me. And that's 100, 5, and 1. And then finally, we'll go ahead and select score. And again, I'm going to make a couple of changes here. So for the speed, I'm going to go from 50 to 80. I'm sorry, that was the power, was 50 to 80, and the speed will be 80 to 60. So the laser has done a wonderful job of cutting these pieces out, and notice the material is still very securely attached to the bed, so I'm gently removing the earrings. 
And when, in the design process, when I hit reflect, this is the reason why. We're going to switch the spots in which these cut. This way, when I go back to do the score and engrave, it will line up. So you'll notice the red lines seem to be misaligned. Don't worry about this and don't make any changes. Just click on the red cut layer and under output you're going to click on ignore because all we need is the score and engrave lines. We don't need the design to cut again. So once that's done, I'm going to click on start and you can see we just have the engrave and the score lines. Once it's done with that, your project is complete. So I hope you found the software tutorial informative. Let's go ahead and have a quick look at the finished product. So I have taken the liberty of attaching the jump ring to the earring. So you can see how well that double you know, circled hoop that I showed you how to make, that works out great. This is a five millimeter jump ring, so that's pretty standard and fits nice in there. You may be able to get away with a slightly smaller one, but you could definitely do larger. And if we take a look at the reverse of the earring, the scoring and the engraving lined up perfectly. So that was a good tip about using the reflect feature, especially when you have earrings. If they're symmetrical, it's not as important. But if they're not symmetrical, it's very important. And this will ensure that you get good alignment as long as the material is secure to the base of the laser. So that's how they look just with the three millimeter basswood. I think they look really nice. So let's have a look at some other options here. If you want to add some color, a good tip is to go ahead and pre-paint the wood. So I've done that here. I just took some same, same exact same wood here, used pink acrylic paint, make sure you let it dry. Then I sent it through the laser to do the, the score and the cut and the engrave. And then what I did is I just took some of my acrylic paint pens. This is a nice little pack that I use here. It's got a nice sampling of colors. And I just took the pen and I wanted to do some detail work in the center of the flower. So I've done this on the reverse. You can see what that would look like right there. Do have a little bit of scorchy there, so I'll probably have to touch up with some pink paint. But that's another great way to just add color to your project and still get the detail. And then the next thing I was thinking, wow, how about I, instead of making this engrave, that I do cut? So I went ahead and did a pair of earrings with exactly that. And how cute did these turn out? So this is another completely different look. I do like it in the natural wood. I think that looks very attractive. And again, did the scoring on the reverse side. Now the total time I um, calculated was a, about five minutes, a little bit under five minutes to do the ones with the engrave and about four minutes to do the ones with the cut. So to get a pair of earrings in under five minutes is actually pretty good. So those looked really great. I, I liked how these turned out. And then I thought, well, how about I add some more color? So here's the, the teaser set that I showed you. And to me, these really do look like a hibiscus or an abstract version of hibiscus. So how I started this out is the same as the pink one. I just did it a nice light yellow. I think it's coming across a bit stronger on the screen, but I did it like um, a medium to light yellow. What, sent that through the laser, make sure I did the score marks. Then I came back and again using my acrylic paint pens, I used a score line to draw around to fill in on the red part. And then I also had this pack of, uh, what are these called? They are self-adhesive rhinestone stickers. And I, I got these off of Amazon and you can see a nice variety pack here, all different colors, different sizes. And I just put one of those in the center of the earring. And so when you wear these and the sun catches it, you get a nice little glint. So it depends, do you want to go more natural 
or do you want to be a little bit bolder and go with some color? So I just wanted to show you from that base design that you have lots of options. So this pretty much concludes the tutorial. I hope you liked it. Uh, please leave me comments to let me know if there's details I missed or information you would like. And also if you would like to see a more detailed view of the M1 machine, I can do a separate video on that and its capabilities because it is a laser cutter, but it's also a vinyl cutter. So again, all the products that I showed you in this tutorial, the pens, the stickers, the laser cutter, those are all listed in the description box below. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, I hope you choose to do so. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy crafting!